Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you're eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. I hope, as we've been journeying through the attributes of God, that it's been helpful for you. I know it is for me uh, to understand who God is, who He really is, how He reveals Himself in Scripture. Uh, so many times we can, as we've talked about, create a just a concept of God, who we think He should be, how we think He should look, act, and so forth. And we take what we like that is revealed about God, and we uh, elevate it for the things that we maybe do not fully like or think are positive aspects of God, we kind of diminish. And so as we go through these attributes, one, it's helped me to have a correct, balanced view of God, to truly know who He is. It has challenged me to remember that who God is in this God that I'm learning about and uh, these great truths, uh, but He's still personal. He's still active in my life and just who He is and what He wants to do in and through my life. And so we're talking about God being omnipotent. We talked about uh, Tuesday's episode that God is all-powerful. He's not just uh, uh, all-powerful, but He's unlimited in His power. But we also talked about He's able to do anything that is consistent with His nature and is possible to do. We emphasize God cannot do what is contradictory. He cannot make 2 plus 2 6. He cannot make a square circle or a circle square. He cannot do things that are contrary to His nature. I mean, God possesses the power to do anything, but He cannot lie. That would be contrary to his nature. God cannot sin. Why? Because he's perfect. He's He cannot do these things. Does that mean he does not possess power to do them? Yes, he has unlimited power, but he uses this power as he wills. God cannot do what is logically or morally impossible. And so we talked about that. We talked about a couple of objections. And so we want to talk about what difference does it make that God is all-powerful? Let me give you three quick thoughts on this episode. Number one is this. God can do all that he desires to do. You see, God is all good and God is all powerful. You and I experience on a daily basis evil. I mean, if you're looking in the news today, you're seeing war occurring. You're seeing evil being displayed. If you're living today, you're seeing it in your community on the news as as people commit crimes, as people are taken advantage of. Uh, you personally or have probably either have recently or will sometime soon uh, be influenced or experience some type of evil, whether you want to or not. And we don't like evil, but God is all good and God is all powerful. And so as a result, evil will be defeated. Some people will bring the uh, the idea of evil up and bring it as an objection against God's omnipotence. Surely, if God is all good and God is all powerful, then He can just remove evil. But He doesn't. Therefore, He must not be all good or He must not be all powerful. But that's that's not the case at all. You see, at the core of humans is free will. In order for God to remove evil, He would have to remove free will. You see, as we have free will, we have the right, the ability to choose. And with the right or the ability to choose, we have the ability to choose good or evil. As we don't choose good, I mean, evil is the absence of good. So as we don't choose good, evil is the option. And so it's not God creating or God doing evil. It's human beings deciding to do that. And so God, yes, he's going to do away with evil. He's going to do away with the pain. Because he's all good and he's all powerful. God desires that all be saved. So those who come to him will be saved. Now, the objection we raised Tuesday was because all people are not, because God desires all to be saved and all are not saved, then he must not be powerful. No, the truth that God can save those who come to him shows his omnipotence. And the thing is, your salvation is done. When you believed on Jesus Christ, you possess eternal life, which is a present possession. You own it. You possess it today. Nothing. There is nothing powerful enough to take it away from you because God gives it to you. There's no questions. There's no hesitation. God has the power to accomplish these acts, to defeat evil. I mean, you think we're we're seeing war played out in the Ukraine and Russia right now. But as we flip to the book of Revelation, 
we see evil displayed, just magnified as it wars against Jesus Christ. And we see the end result that God possesses the power to destroy Satan, to destroy evil. Why? Because he's omnipotent. And so you and I can rest. You and I can have a hopeful future. You and I can see things that, yeah, they cause anxiety, they cause stress. Yeah, as I read the news, yes, it causes me to stress. I shouldn't, but it does. But then I can go back and remember, wait, my God is omnipotent. My God is changeless. He will not change. He cannot change. My God is omniscient. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. And I can rest in his love. I can rest in his goodness. I can rest in his power because he has the power to keep me. He has the power to keep his prophecy. What he said will happen, will come to pass. Why? Because he's omnipotent. Secondly, God can keep his promises. There's nothing worse than somebody promising something to you and not following through, breaking the promise, right? God is not like that. What God has promised, he has the ability to keep. He will keep every single one of those promises. No one can talk him out of it. No one can force him into breaking that promise. You see, he has promised to do what? To hear your prayer. You know, I don't know what you have going on in your life right at this very moment. But it may be some trial. It may be some heartache. It may be something that's just brought confusion into your life. You don't know why that person did that or how this event transpired. You don't know how you, you even got to where you're at right now. And you're just struggling. You're, you're, you're just wore out. You're weary. God has promised to hear you. He's promised to hear your cry. Remember, God collects the tears. He knows your tears. He, why? Because he's promised that he would do these things. And it's not just a promise. He has the power to keep those promises. Jesus said this, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Wow. When I feel all alone, when I feel people have just done me wrong, when I feel there's uh, everybody's against me, the world, the devil, whatever. In my loneliest moments, Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You see, he's promised that he is preparing a place for you. He's promised that he will come again. How can we know this is true? Because he's omnipotent. God possesses the power, unlimited power, to do what he has willed. He possesses the power to hear your prayer, to, to keep his promises, to never leave you, to go and prepare the place for you, and not to get lost, not to forget what he was doing. He said, I'm going to come again. So the rapture of the church is coming. It's going to happen. You see, because God is omnipotent, death is not the end. I have seen fear over the last two or three, two years with, with the uh, coronavirus. People scared to death. And I understand because there's been a lot of death. There's been a lot of sickness, and this has been tragic. But people that, do, that are not believers and do not have hope of eternal life, all they possess is the now, their life now. And so I see fear struck in people, so fearful they're going to lose their lives. And I, I'm not saying I don't want to lose mine. What I'm saying to you is there's a difference in a believer that possesses the hope of eternal life because death is not the end. For those who do not have a Christian worldview that are not believers and, or whether they're atheists, agnostics, skeptics, whatever, death is the end. There is nothing after that. But God possesses the power to do what? To resurrect. He possesses resurrection power. So death is not your end if you're a believer. Eternal life will be what? It will be eternal. Why? Because God is omnipotent. He can keep his promises. And then lastly, God can intervene in your situation. You know, no matter how, no matter how big the trial or circumstance is in your life, God is bigger. Remember that. No matter how big it seems, no matter when you feel like you cannot see over the mountain, when the mountain feels like it's about to crush you, God is bigger than that mountain. God is more powerful than your trial or circumstance. And I know sometimes it's like, God, where are you at? I'm praying. I, I'm claiming the promise that you hear my prayer. I believe you're omnipotent. 
uh, uh, claiming the promise that you're never going to leave me. I know you're here. The Holy Spirit indwells me, but God, I just don't see you working or moving. And that's where you remember how these attributes are beautifully woven together. Yes, God is omnipotent, but God is also omniscient. He knows. And so sometimes he withholds the power to intervene or do something because of his knowledge of the past, the pa- the the past, present, or future, because he's trying to work. And so many times, you know, I was talking to a pastor just this past week, and he, he was sharing uh, just uh, the last couple years, ministry, life-wise, what he's learning and so forth. And we both agreed, you know, God grows us the most through the trials, through the heartaches, the difficult situations. That's where the growth takes place. And I can agree with that 100%, but I would not choose one moment to walk through any of those situations. But God knows I'm begging God to intervene, God to remove it, God to take you out. <clears throat> And he doesn't seem to do that. Why? Because in God's knowledge, in God's love, he's growing us. Why? To bring us in a greater knowledge of himself, to draw us into a closer relationship in himself. But bottom line is, God has the power to take care of your situation. And many times he does. It may take a week, a month, a year. Or God may sustain us with his power through that situation. That's the whole thing. God will hold our right hand. He will walk with us through the fire, through the trial. So you can rest in God's care because he possesses the power to accomplish what he desires and what he has promised. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, we would love for you to share it with a friend or subscribe so that you can stay up to date on the latest studies. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.